a hand video today it's a bad hair day hello Neil Shirtcliffe Horshaw Rheinvall um, I'm going to talk today about liquid oxygen because of a video that I see saw recently on YouTube by some people called Peter and Pete or Pete and Peter who uh, claim the following about oxygen and yeah okay but he doesn't mention anything about the liquid nitrogen so it doesn't mention anything about the liquid nitrogen but so he's he's a happy chappy he thinks well science is telling him no yeah, pork but, is at all but isn't there there's one big thing that here and that is if you go on the wikipedia page on liquid oxygen uh yeah i'm sure yeah i'm sorry i didn't get uh, that page up people are waiting liquid oxygen yes we know the liquid oxygen well, yeah. yeah of course yeah yeah uh, oh, look. Oh, blue. Look, it's blue now liquid oxygen is a pale blue liquid right. Okay, that's number one. Now, when well, we have a look, look at his uh, pale, let's have a look at his pale blue liquid. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can find a pale blue, blue liquid. liquid. Okay, I think was it the first time he took it out was. No, it was, it was before them. It was before them, wasn't it? Yeah, there. There. Wait there. Let's get it back into view. So mm, it's there. He's got, he's got a quite a nice. Despite being wrong about a lot of things, Peter and Pete are actually correct here that it is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen and that it should, would be blue if it was pure oxygen. So what they're complaining about is the following situation. The guy in the educational video has got a container. And there's a second container inside it with air blowing in. Oops, air blowing in. This in here is liquid nitrogen, and the air goes through. Hang on, let's put make this into a box. The air gets blown into the little tube, fills it up with some liquid that condenses inside, which would it be expected to be mostly oxygen, but also contain other things. What um, Pete and Peter are claiming is that it can't be oxygen because oxygen should be blue. The theory, the normal theory of oxygen is that uh, if we take oxygen, which looks like this, two oxygen atoms with a double bond, there are some extra electrons that hang around in an antibonding orbital and they are typically pointing in the same direction. Electrons can point in two directions. Um, according to quantum mechanics and that causes oxygen to behave in a magnetic fashion which um, the guy in the video actually uh, he measured this and showed showed that the liquid that he made attached to a magnet which suggests that it is oxygen because nitrogen is not magnetic um, so if we take normal oxygen and we excite it with light or we, we excite it we can get it to its first excited state, sorry about my hand being in the way there, which would be with one of the electrons flipped over, like this. This electron here flips to the other direction, but it turns out that this would be infrared, and that this is incredibly difficult to do because our, our quantum mechanics um, makes it difficult uh, that is because this is uh, because turning an electron over uh, using light is um, quantum mechanically not allowed. It does happen, but it's very unlikely because light doesn't have the type of momentum required to flip an electron over. Let's try the other side of that one. However, if we take two molecules hang on let me try and get my uh, if we take two molecules of oxygen that are next to each other and we swap these two electrons here then we can make two molecules of excited oxygen with electrons in opposite directions 
and they this, this requires twice as much energy because we're exciting two electrons and that happens to be red light red and this is the conventional explanation of why oxygen liquid appears to be blue we can uh, check that so if we go onto a video which I will post over here which I will put up here a link to you can see that if we take the opposite process where we take uh, sorry two of these whoop. if we take two of these and we go in the other direction we can get red light to come out to make two oxygen normal types of oxygens in their ground state so this is the relaxed normal oxygen O2 and this is higher energy higher energy excited excited O2 this can give out red light and you can see this in this video up here they demonstrate it they make it chemically it decays to normal oxygen which is this case this state giving out red light which you can see it's not very bright um, so they need to do it in the dark to be able to show the react show the red light coming out if they do it in the light you see nothing at all New bit of paper. the point about this is um, if we take if we need two oxygen molecules that are, happen to be aligned in the correct way um, and they exchange electrons or they exchange some kind of spin that is difficult or it's very unlikely the two oxygens have to be very close to each other and organized in the right way and that is much more likely to happen in liquid oxygen than it is in gas oxygen in the air for example this reaction is extremely rare because it's highly unlikely that two oxygen molecules can get close enough for this to occur at the same time as a light particle a photon of red light coming in and hitting them if this did happen in the atmosphere we would expect uh, red light to be absorbed and therefore uh, the Sun for example to appear more blue than it actually does there would be a missing part of the spectrum in this color where oxygen would absorb however what we still haven't done is explain why the liquid that the man or the person in their education educational video made from air is not blue first of all if we look at liquid oxygen we see it's not very dark blue at all and that's because this reaction requires two molecules and they have to be very close together therefore most of the oxygen even in liquid oxygen is not able to absorb light if we add some other molecules of something else we discover that uh, the uh, that this becomes less and less likely and it is much less likely um, as the concentration goes down it goes down by a higher power of the concentration so it doesn't go down linearly it goes down much faster than linearly and that means even in a low concentration of nitrogen we can't see the blue absorption the blue blue color so why is there nitrogen in the liquid well it turns out normally if we take a composition of things so if we take percent um, nitrogen for example we would get uh, and this is so this is a hundred percent O2 and this is a hundred percent nitrogen and we measure the temperature of boiling we we will see a curve and if we measure the temperature of condens condens condensing gas we will also measure a curve if we do a distillation we will uh, get this gas and if we condense it it condenses to this liquid which you can see even on this sketch graph is not pure oxygen if we look up the real results which is fairly easy to do on the internet these days we can see that 
21% oxygen, the air in the atmosphere, will be likely to make about 50% oxygen-nitrogen mixture if we condense it. That doesn't take into account the other gases that are in there, but luckily water will freeze at the temperature of liquid nitrogen, so that will be a solid. It's not very soluble in oxygen or nitrogen anyway. But carbon dioxide, for example, will be much more concentrated depending on what flow rate you use pushing it through the uh, little tube. If you push too much air through, you'll get way more carbon dioxide because that freezes at a much higher temperature than oxygen or nitrogen. So it's not particularly surprising that uh, the liquid that we condense from air, although it's mostly oxygen or around 50% oxygen, it's it uh, doesn't appear to be blue, it doesn't absorb red light, and although it is magnetic, it responds to a magnet, and uh, it relights a splint, as the, in the original video that Pete and Peter were criticizing in their video.